So I recently did a video on how to manage deletion of records in a list using in-memory cache. And the problem that we had encountered was when you type in a song, so we have a search field here, right? So if you type in come down, right? We can delete this record and it's gone, but as soon as you back out of the search, it's not going to be gone because Apollo caches each and every search because this has a filter parameter being passed into the Apollo query. And so each and every query is cached. And so that's a problem that we're going to solve. And I solved it earlier with in-memory cache, and now I wanna show you cache.evict, which is much simpler. Please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell for notifications for more programming tutorials, and I will see you inside. Hello everyone, in this video I wanted to do a video on in-memory cache or evicting more specifically. And so I wanna show you how to use evict and I have a project here that we can use. So I'm, all we gotta do is grab the git repo here. There's a link in the description so you can grab that. But we'll go into a folder that we want to use and oops, I forgot to do git clone. So we'll do git clone and then the folder. And so we're actually not going to be using in memory cat in memory cache for this tutorial, but we did in a previous tutorial and you'll see the issue that we were having. So, okay. So once that's downloaded, we can CD into it, CD in memory cache, and then CD client and then NPM install, and then open up a new tab. in memory cache and then cd server and npm install okay server is done clients not quite I'm going to go out of the server and open up the project. So code dot, we'll open up the text editor. And what is this? Okay, so I think it's done. Okay, so client and server are both done so we can now start up the server with nodemon src well say change back into the server and so nodemon src index.js and then over in the client we can just do npm start okay and then I've got my browser. Okay, so we have our starting application. So let's try to search for and delete a song. So we'll type in with this, the first one. So gravity, and then if we hit delete, and then we back out, we can see that it's only gone for the search when search terms GRA is typed in, and it should be gone for all of them. And let's take a look at what's happening. We can right click inspect and go into our console to see our dev tools. And let's type in the space T. And so we get this song that we can delete, but before we delete it, let's look at our Apollo client dot cache and then in memory cache data data and root query. Okay, and so we can see all of our cached result sets and Apollo f Apollo makes a new cached result for each and every query including the parameters. So anytime there's a unique or a new parameter, then it's going to cache that separately. And so we have here the space T and we have one item here inside of it. And so we can see that we have the reference to song colon 11. 
which is song colon 11 here is the triumph of King Freak. So if we delete the item and then let's go back and we can see that it's still here and let's look at our cache again. So Apollo client dot cache data data root query and so now we see the space T and we get an empty array here. And that's because the reference to this song was deleted, but we still have the song itself. And so we need to evict or we need to remove this item completely from the cache. And that's pretty much how we can fix this issue. And there will be something interesting here, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. So let's go ahead and solve this problem. Let's open up our text editor. And then in our, my code, I have it set up so the delete song is in a hook, the mutation's in a hook. So let's go into our hooks.js file in our SRC. And then what we'll want to do is we're going to comment out this read query and write query. Okay, and then we're going to identify the cache. And so we can do const identity equals cache.identify. And then we'll want to pick the song to identify. And so we're going to be using this variable here, delete song. And I want to console.log it just to kind of see what it is. So delete song. And then we have it. And then let's also console.log our identity. Let's also Okay, so that should give us a little bit of idea of what's going on. And then after we identify the song and store it in this identity variable, we can evict it from the cache. So cache.evict and then by ID, identity. Okay, and then we'll save that. So we'll save it and then let's try again. So we'll refresh and let's go after the bellman this time. So we'll do the space bell and then we can click delete. And then if you see that we, no matter what our search is, the bellman is gone. And that is because it deleted it from the cache or it deleted the song itself from the cache. And so if we look at our console.logs, our delete song was the the song here, and then the identity was the cached item, so song eight. And now let's look at our Apollo client.cache and in memory cache, data, data, root query, and we can see Let's look in the bell and we can see that the reference to the song is still there, song eight, but the song eight itself is gone. So we've removed the item, but we've keep, kept the reference. And so this is something that Apollo Client does on purpose by default. And we can take a look at the documentation. It talks about that and so we have dangling references that are left over. And so you may want to be careful with those, but I think it's just a lot of, you know, you can play around with it and see, you know, what, what you need to do. I don't know if you even really need to manage the dangling references. It seems like it's been fine for me, but if you want to play around with it, we can go ahead and do that inside of the in-memory cache. So here's the instructions on how to mess around with and kind of customize what you do with dangling references. But before we do that, I wanted to just show you one more thing here. And this isn't really that important, but this cache.evict, you can also specify a field name to delete instead of deleting the whole item. So let's give that a try. 
So we'll do comma field name, and then we have either title, well, this one we have title ID or type name. And so I don't wanna get rid of the whole song. I just wanna get rid of the type name. So let's give that a try. So we'll just say underscore, underscore type name. So underscore, underscore type name. I think it might have to be parentheses. So let's save that. And then now let's try it. So now if we refresh and let's get rid of like a stone. So if we hit delete, it's not gonna go away, but well, it did recognize it. And if we do Apollo client dot cache, we can see data, data, and then this like a stone no longer has its type name field. And so I don't know if that's useful to you. I'm sh they made it, so I'm sure it's useful somehow, but that's just an interesting thing we can do. And so now let's go ahead and mess around with our, with our in-memory cache. And honestly, I don't really have any good ideas of what I would wanna do with the in-memory cache. I would have to get farther along in this app to make something and then actually encounter a problem. But I do wanna play around with it real quick. So let's go ahead and open it up. And I hope that you know if you have an issue, maybe this will hopefully get you started. So let's go over to our index.js file and then we'll update our in-memory cache. But we will have, we'll update the in-memory cache and we'll do type policies and then query and fields. And then our fields are called songs in this case. So we'll do songs and then we'll do existing songs and we can get can read and to reference from the parameters and then we'll look inside of songs. And so what I wanna do is I just wanna show you what each of these things are. So we'll do a console.log existing songs and existing songs. So if we save that and then we open our browser, we're not gonna get anything back, but you can see that we do get the existing songs in the array. And so these are all the song references in the cache but we can't access them because we have to return it from the songs query. So if we wanted our songs back, we'd have to actually return existing songs because that's the array of songs. So we'll save it and then we get our data back. And let's see the next step we could, I wanna look at the can read. So the can read is what's gonna cause the cache to break. Or So when there's a dangling reference, it can't be read. So this can read function will return false. And so if we look at can read, let's, let's use can read on the existing songs. Uh, in its entirety. And so if we, oh, well, I gotta also do a console.log. So we'll do let test equals can read and then console.log test, test. So we'll save it and then we'll get a true. And that's because this is a query and this query is still readable. But let's try to read the first song and then we'll delete it. So let's try that. And we're gonna do, let's say let test equals can read existing songs at zero. And so we'll save that. Okay, and we get an error and that's because the first time it goes through it's, the songs haven't been generated yet, so it returns undefined. So we can do an if conditional. So if existing songs, then we can run this test. So let's try this. Okay, so we'll do save, and we'll refresh, and we see test of true, 
And that's because this song of, with the ID of two exists. And that is probably evening stars. So let's just take a look at our cache. So Apollo client dot cache in memory data, data and query. Okay, so we get song ID of two evening star. So let's try to delete it and then see if it's still readable. So once we hit delete, and then we see test becomes false because the first song, which is the canons, has been deleted. So this reference in the cache is no longer readable, so can read returns false. And so basically what you can do is you can play around in here and do whatever you need to do as long as you end up returning the data that you want to be returned from this song's query. So I don't know, I, I, I don't have really a good idea of what I would wanna do in here, so I can't really come up with a good example, but your application may look different and something may be necessary, you may need to tweak the in-memory cache. So again, feel free to play around with the documentation, and I hope this video was helpful. But in the end, I am happy with just having nothing in here, so. I'll just save this and then I'll refresh. And as of now, this application appears to work. So if I do the outsider and I delete it, it's gone. So I'm happy with just the simple solution. And so that's how, that's part of how you can use cache.evict. And I hope this video was helpful. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching our video. If you found it helpful, please click on the second link in the description to sign up for our newsletter, where we send our best content to help you improve your skills and stay up to date in the industry. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button below and the bell to be notified when we release new tutorials. That's all for this video, everyone. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.